this actually comes up twice it comes up in in the beginning of the year two stats as well um which i think we're going to be doing in school if we get time to um so you should you should come up against this twice uh, which is quite useful because it's a bit of a strange kind of one-off technique that we use but that means that it's quite obvious it's quite clear when it's an exam question that this is this is the topic this is the thing they want us to do and what this is about is um using logarithms to look at trends in data um again this is massively connected to the coronavirus stuff that, that's been going on in the news and this is one way to check or look at if we have exponential growth or decay it is much easier to look at a straight line to see a relationship than a curve to see a relationship so what we tend to do and i'll draw a little i'll draw a little graph is, is to ignore this this information here is um not plug my tablet in one sec There we go. Is if we've got, if we are suspicious that we have exponential growth or some sort of polynomial growth, like an x to the power of four graph. If we, if we're like, yeah, I think that's x to the power of four. It's much easier to see if it's x to the power of four by doing the maths, the, the maths that we are about to do, and see a straight line, than just guess that that's x to the power of four or guess that it's exponential growth or decay so that's what we're going to do we are going to do some magic and turn data from graphs like this and see if they can be turned into straight line graphs and if they can then we can confirm that we've got uh, quadratic growth or cubic growth or quartic growth or exponential growth or decay it's going to be decay for any of these as well so we have got two situations. Um, one is when it's polynomial and one is when it's exponential. And we'll do pretty much the same thing, but we'll end up drawing slightly different graphs. So the first thing we're going to look at is if we are we if we have a polynomial and we want to see if it's polynomial by taking logs and seeing if it turns into a straight line. So I've got an example of a, a generic polynomial here. A will be a constant number, like a three or a four. N will be a, a constant as well. X and Y are the variables. So A and N are constants, are just numbers that are set, and X and Y are variables. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take logs of both sides. I'm going to use a base of B, just a general base, and hopefully you kind of recognize what I'm doing here now. If I log this, this will all be one log, a x to the power of n, which doesn't look very useful. What's the point in doing that? Well, the point in doing that is because is that we can use our rules that we have for logs and we can mess around with the right hand side a bit. I'm not going to do anything to the left. But what can I do to the right? Well, I can use my multiplication rule first. I've got two things being times together. I've got an A times X to the power of N. And my multiplication rule says that I can split that into just log to the base B of A, add, hopefully you were thinking add there, add log to the base B of X to the power of N. And I can do one more thing as well. I can bring this N down to the front here. So I can rewrite this, this first new line here as log to the base B of Y is equal to log to the base B of A plus N times log to the base B of X. Now, again, you might be thinking, well, what's the point? That doesn't look very helpful either. But I'm going to just rearrange it a little bit. And rewrite it like this. Now, if I let 
x, uh, sorry, if I'm going to let log b of y be um, a t, and I'm going to let log b of x be another variable. So if this is a variable, then this is a variable. And if this is a variable, then let's just use r. r is a variable too. So I can write t equals nr plus, and this is a constant, so I'm going to let that be a k. In fact, I'm going to be really obvious and let it be a c. Now, if r and t are variables, this is a straight line. That's a straight line graph, OK? It doesn't look like a straight, graph, straight line graph here, but it looks more like a straight line graph here. We know that straight line graphs are anything in this form. But if I've just got different letters that are still variables, this is still a straight line graph, which means this is a straight line graph, which is really, really powerful if we have a polynomial form. So if we think we have polynomial form, we can check that we do by taking these steps, by logging both sides, and drawing this graph, if we draw this graph and get a straight line, then we know that we do have polynomial growth. So that's the idea. That's, that's the point of this. That's why we want to do it. So it's to see if we have got, in this case, polynomial growth. Now, in order for that to work, we're not going to draw y and x on our axes our axes are going to be log to the base b of x and log to the base b of y. And we should hopefully get the answer to this question would be a straight line. So we're going to have on the x axis, not x, we're going to have log x and not y on here, we're going to have log y. And if we have polynomial growth, then this will be a straight line graph. Not necessarily going through the origin. I shouldn't have drawn it through the origin. It could that that c value um, would mean it could go anywhere. Okay, so that's that's the idea behind why we do this, what the point is, and um, what graphs we would need to draw. Um, so I've got an example that will um, hopefully allow us to kind of see what kind of questions we might be asked. I've just taken this straight out from the textbook. Um, so we've got a table of rank of, and population of large UK cities. They've excluded London as, a, an, a, as an outlier. Um, so that's why it starts two, three, four, five, six, rather than one, two, three, four, five. Um, they think that the populations are decreasing exponentially. So we've got P equals A times R to the power of N. And it wants us to just convert these numbers into logs. Now, I'm going to use a base of 10. And I'm going to use a base of 10. We said last week, and or maybe the week before, that 10 is kind of the standard base, unless you've got a reason to use another base. So when they, when they write log without a number, it tends to be a 10. The other reason I'm going to use a 10 is because that will then fit with the scale that I've made. So I'm literally just going to do log to the base 10 of 2 and write the answer here, log to the base 10 of 3, write the answer here, and just fill in the numbers in the table. You don't have to do this along with me because uh, it's going to take you a while to draw the tables and stuff out. You might want to go back and re-watch this to make your notes after we're done. Uh, but So log to the base 10 of 2 is 0 0.30. Log to the base 10 of 3 is 0 0.48. The next one is 0 0.60. The next one 0 0.70. I'm just finding to two significant figures because I'm not going to be able to be any more accurate on my graph. And log to base 10 of 6 is 0 0.7, um, 7, I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom row. Just log those numbers with a base of 10. Uh, 
and that's six. Five point eight six five point seven nine seven two and last one is five point six eight. Okay, so those numbers at the top were our initial data. We are then going to see if we have got exponential decay by looking at whether when we draw these numbers, when we plot these values, do we get a straight line? We're hoping to get a straight line. Now, we know that it was log R and log P because of what we just said on the previous page. If it is polynomial, which this is, because R is the variable, not N, then it's going to be logs on both axes. OK, I'm, I'm making that dif that difference clear now, because on the next one, we don't have logs on both axes. So let's get these numbers plotted. First one is 0 0.3 and 6. I'll do this. I'll try and do this quickly. I might not be very accurate. 0 0.48 and 5.86 is going to be there. 0 0.6 and 5.79 there. 7 and 5.72 there. And 0 0.78 and 5.68. Yeah. Okay, so that to me looks like a pretty straight line because it's data, because it's not maths, it's real life, not going to be perfect. But those numbers look pretty close to being on a straight line to me. You're always going to get, unless they've like properly manipulated the data, never going to be perfect. That looks pretty good as a straight line to me. So already we can say, yes, I think there is this polynomial relationship, this AR to the power of N. What else have they asked us to do, though? So we've plotted the numbers. It then says, use your graph to work out what those values of A and N are actually going to be. So we're suspicious that our data fits this form. We've confirmed that our data fits this form by logging both sides and seeing that there's a straight line. So now that we've confirmed that it can be written in this form and that that model can be used accurately, maybe to predict other um, ranks or other populations, we can now work out these values so that we have a useful equation to use. So we want to use the data that we've got, use the graph that we've got now and work out the equation of this line. Because that would be very hard to do. If I just plotted these numbers, it would be really hard to work out what these what form that equation had. So that's why we want it to be a straight line. So how do we do that? Well, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to work out the equation of this red line. We want the equation of the straight line so that we can kind of go backwards and work out the polynomial equation. So this is a straight line graph, y equals mx plus c. In order to have the equation of a straight line, we need the gradient and we need the y-intercept. Unfortunately, on the graph that I've drawn, I can't just rob the y-intercept. So I'm going to have to use my y minus y1 equals mx minus x1 and pick two points out. And I may as well use two points that my line has actually gone through. So I'm going to use this one, which was 0 0.3, 0 0.6, uh, sorry, 6. And what else has it gone through? Let's use this 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.17, 0 0.18, 0 0
and 5.72. We're going to use those two points to work out the gradient and then work out the y-intercept. So gradient, this is really good practice with your coordinate geometry. Uh, gradient is y minus y1, so 5.72 minus 6 over 0 0.7 minus 0 0.3. It's a negative line. We can see that it's a negative gradient, so it's going to hopefully come out negative. And I'm getting negative 0 0.7. So that's my gradient. Then I can use either one of these coordinates to work out my y-intercept. So I'm going to use the top one. y minus 6 equals minus 0 0.7 times x minus 0 0.3. I'm going to expand the brackets. And add the 6 on. OK, so we have got our straight line graph equation and it is y equals minus 0.7x plus 6.21. How do we then use that to help us work out the p equals a r to the power of n? So let's write that down again. p equals a r to the power of n. Now, where did those values come from? Well, if you remember, the y was actually the log to the base um, 10 of p, and the x was actually log to the base 10 of r. So if we now look at our other equation that we wrote down, this one here, then the y-intercept, our 6.21 is equal to this log to the base b of a. That's the difficult one. I'm not sure why I picked it first. But 6.21 is equal to that um, log to the base b, which is log to the base 10 of a. And we're going to be able to go backwards and get our a out of that. And the n is just the gradient. n, we can already say, is equal to the negative 0 0.7. If I go back to my working out on the first page, this n here is the same as this n here. So that's the gradient of the line. The n is the gradient, so the n is the power. So we've already worked that out. That power is minus 0 0.7. So that's that. Last job then is to get the A out of this equation here. And again, you're going to need to use your log rules. You're going to need to think about how we can get the A out of that. A will equal 10 to the power of 6.21. This is going to be a really big number, but that's OK. We had really big numbers in our data, so it's not unreasonable to have a big number here. We only need to round our answers to two significant figures, which is a bit dodgy here because this actually came out as one significant figure. So it's it's not it's not good, very good math to add that extra zero in there. But I feel a bit stuck. In fact, I'm not I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it at zero minus zero point seven. The other number though, ten to the power of six point two one, is to two significant figures. 160, no, 1.6 million. What's that? Yeah. Okay, so those that's the answer to this question. Now, I know that it feels a little bit weird. I kind of, what's the point? Why are we doing this? But what we've been able to show from this data here we now have the equation that this data follows, even though it's a, not a straight line, even though it's a curve, and curves are really hard to pin down 
because so many different variations of curves can look very similar, we've now been able to use the logs to help us make a straight line to then be able to go back and find the actual relationship for this data that we've got here. So we can now say that P is equal to that, which is very, very useful, really, really important. The other, the other type of question that we have is when it's, it's exponential, not polynomial. And we can tell it's exponential because our variable x is up as a power here, whereas before our x was a base. So if x is a base, it's polynomial. If x is a power, it's exponential. I'm going to have to pause and just go and sort the dogs out. Right, OK, let's carry on. Hopefully the dogs will be quiet now. Um, that's, that's teaching from home. Right, so we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We are going to log both sides. Something different will happen. I'm going to use a base of B initially. OK, and similar to the first one, we can split the right hand side. This time, the X is going to come down to the front. But look what we've got here if we choose a base of B. Can you remember what happens if you log with a base of B, a B? Hopefully, you are telling me, you're saying in your head, so out loud, that that value is 1. So with this time, we've got log to the base B of Y equals log to the base B of A plus just X on its own. Now, this is also a straight line graph. If we have on the X axis X and on the Y axis log to the base B of Y. And this time, oh, I lost my A there. This time, the Y intercept won't be a number. Well, it will be a number, but it will be log to the base B of A. OK. So this, if we were to draw, unlike the other one where we did logs on both axes, if we were to have just x on this axis, but log to the base b of y on this axis, that would also produce a straight line. So that's what I've got going on here. So it wouldn't be log to the base b of x, it would be just an x on the x axis. Now that's only going to happen exactly like this if we take the same base as this value here. Now, normally we wouldn't know what that value is. We wouldn't know until we've done the maths what that value is. So the difficulty is not knowing what base to use. So if I was to use a different base, the only thing that would happen is that we wouldn't have a gradient of one here. We'd have some other gradient. I'll do it really quickly to show you. But if I choose a different base, say I use the base of K, split this then this isn't going to become one that will just become that will be a gradient value um it's written backwards but that's my constant that's my gradient And that's my y-intercept. So hopefully you can still see that it is in y equals kind of inverted commas, y equals mx plus c form. Here's my m, here's my c. OK, so when you when you start a question, you will log both sides. Um, if that's the kind of question you're given, you would log both sides and you would see for yourselves whether you needed to draw it X against log Y or log X against log Y. Or they would give you the graph, like I've done here, and you would spot that that's not a log 
and you'd be thinking, well, this is going to be exponential. You might be lucky and they tell you that it's going to be exponential. So you've got two things there telling you that this is kind of method two, not method one. So let's go through this example. This is slightly different than the other question in that I've given you the graph, I've given you some information, and we're going to work out the equation from that. So it's a little, we're a bit further ahead than the previous question. We've already got the gradient and we've even got the y-intercept for us. So straight away, we can say that this graph is, I'm not sure why I'm in, I'm in pink. This graph is log, and they've said log, which means it's a 10 of P is equal to MX, so 0.6T plus two. We know that's the, the equation of the line. That's just how it is. That's our two variables, t and log to the base 10 of p. It says write down the equation of the line. Well, I've just done that there. That's this. So I'll bring that down to here. And then it says find the values of a and b. So that's why we had to use a 10. It's because we don't know what the b is until we've done the question. If we'd knew, known what B is, we wouldn't we wouldn't need to ask, be asked this question. So how do we go from this in pink to the P equals A, B to the T? Well, we're going to have to remember how we unlog. OK, so how do we get the P, the P out of this log? Well, what will happen if you think about our Y equals um, B to the X? What does x equal? x equals log to the base b of y. If we're in this situation, we want to go backwards to this, which means it's going to be p is equal to our base, which is 10. And then this is all of my x, so that's going to all be raised as the power. But that doesn't look terribly useful either. How is that going to help me get A and B? Because that looks not very much like this A, B to the power of T thing. So the next thing we have to do is use our index rules. If we've got two things added together here, where did that come from? This is like year eight maths. It's come from the two terms being times together with the same base. We're more used to going from this line to this line, but we do it at A level have to be able to split it as well. The next thing we do is concentrate on here and think about our other index law. How do we get to two things being times together? Well, that's our power of a power rule. That's this. And all of a sudden, I don't know why I've written 0 0.2. All of a sudden, we've got two numbers that we can work out. We've got 10 to the power of 0 0.6 and we've got 10 squared. We can work those numbers out on the calculator. 10 to the power of 0 0.6 is 3.98. So we've got 3.98 to the power of t times by 100. And if we go back to how they wanted our work to look, P equals A times B to the T. Well, if I just rearrange this to the, put in the 100 first, that's exactly what they wanted. So our A is the first number, is the 100. And B is 3.98. So we've been able to, again, we've been able to take the straight line and work backwards and find out what that exponential relationship was. Final part, which is a quite a common one word, one mark kind of end of an exam question question, is what's the val what does A represent? What is that initial A value? And it's the it's the um it is the initial population of bacteria. So it's how many bacteria there were at the beginning of this, this experiment or whatever it was, this, this measuring of bacteria. It is the initial population value. That's a very common question. We've talked about that in previous lessons. OK, 
okay? So those are the two types of questions. That's that's what I wanted to go through with you today. I'm sorry that took a little bit longer than I expected. Um, but th those are the two things you, you will possibly have to do in terms of taking curves, making them straight lines, or kind of switching between logs, straight line graphs, and exponentials or polynomial forms. Um, I'm going to pause there. Does anybody want to ask, ask anything? Is anybody not sure what I've done at any point or, or have any other questions? No, you're all staying very quiet. Hopefully I've not bored you to death. I reckon you're just waiting to get outside into the sunshine. No? Okay, cool. Right. Um, that takes us to the very last exercise then. That's exercise 14H, which begins on page 331. So you should now be able to work through that 